Hey, it's Mike Brennan, and we're back with another edition of 420 Post Live. And uh, boy, I'm telling you, we should record the conversation that we have 15 minutes. No, we can't. I'm getting head shaking. So we can't do that. But we have this very interesting conversations before the show starts. So we'll just leave it at that. But anyway, uh, for the show today, uh, I was at Canacon uh, Detroit on Friday, working the show, kind of looking at all the different companies there. And uh, I was hard pressed to find very many from Michigan. It was mostly folks from outside Michigan that want to play in Michigan, which is great, right, for us. So uh, anyway, uh, uh, we're going to be talking to a couple of those folks, uh, AB Lighting and then MIM from our Canadian cousins across the, the, the river there in Windsor. And uh, we'll get to them shortly. But first, we're going to have Rick Thompson do those great headlines. Go ahead, Rick. Well, hello again, everyone. This is the Cannabis News with Rick Thompson on 420 Post. So let's begin. Uh, three citizens in Arkansas are suing four companies in federal court, asserting that the four are conspiring to inflate THC numbers in order to increase marketability of their cannabis products. What a familiar story. The four companies include Steep Hill Labs and three cultivators. The lawsuit accuses the group of a RICO conspiracy, stating the lab's been, quote, overrepresenting the amount of THC in flour to the detriment of the plaintiff and class so that Steep Hill, the cultivators, and the dispensaries can make more money, end quote, taken directly from the lawsuit. The three people are all medical marijuana patients, and they believe the deceptive claims put them at risk. In a RICO suit, any financial award made by the court is tripled. So the consequence of losing this case could be a very stiff penalty indeed for those four companies. Now, there's clearly a Michigan parallel here with the Viridis Lab scandal raging. But until a federal judge makes a ruling on this RICO charge against Steep Hill, it's unclear if a similar action in, in Michigan would yield any results at all. The Cannabis Regulatory this year awarded $20 million in research grants empowered by the taxation of cannabis sales. The winners were Wayne State University and the University of Michigan. Wayne State received full funding for two of their research projects, and the university received about 75% of the money they had requested. A total of five entities submitted proposals by the April 1st deadline. U of M will study the use of CBD in pain management for the express purpose of preventing veteran suicide. The Wayne State University projects include a large-scale clinical trial for THC and CBD in veterans with PTSD, and also a continuing study on how cannabis reduces neuroinflammation and therefore reduces suicide idolation in veterans. Now, this is the last year in which $20 million in funding is available as per the language of the legalization ballot proposal. If future research is to be funded with cannabis dollars in Michigan, that authorization would have to come from the legislature. In our last story, boy, if you were dumb enough to buy into the scheme, you got scammed and you probably needed to learn a lesson. Ever heard of Juicy Fields? It was a crypto company where people could theoretically invest in a virtual cannabis cultivation firm. Right, virtual. People bought shares in actual plants and then traded them for profit, except no plants ever existed. So according to thestreet.com, the users on Juicy Fields, the online platform, could buy and sell plants, manage them in virtual greenhouses, and then be paid for their plants. The company offered a too-good-to-be-true 66% return on investment in just three months, and DW.com reports that they promised a 100% return on investment in the first year. Now the company has scrubbed their social media accounts, closed off their investor portal, and have just disappeared. As many as half a million people have been taken in this scam, mostly from Europe, Africa, Asia, and Latin America. One Spanish group estimates the Juicy Fields group took in 9 billion English pounds in currency. Oh and there are not and never were any real plants. This has been described as an international Ponzi scheme running by people who are used to scamming cryptocurrency users. Now, I'm really sorry for your loss, but really, a virtual cannabis garden? Not surprising this scheme didn't turn out as planned. And that's it for the Cannabis News with Rick Thompson on 420 Post. Back to you, Mike. 
Wow. Yeah. Cryptocurrency. Um, I had 200,000 coins myself in a company that suddenly disappeared. So, uh, yeah, so much for that. Uh, and, and I'm getting back to your uh, the, the report on the $20 million for veterans uh, investigation. That's one of the big reasons a lot of the doctors won't pre prescribe any CBDs or anything like that because they're worried about malpractice because there's no scientific work behind the shows that they actually work right and well, that's, that's not true if you if you go on a, on the internet and look at something called granny storm crows list you'll find thousands and thousands of studies from across the world the problem is that american doctors only want to respect american studies so when we have progress progress made in europe or in israel or in latin america we tend to ignore it here in the United States until our own system reproduces it. But there's plenty of evidence about the efficacy of, of CBD and THC products. So I think they're waiting for FDA endorsement is what I meant to say. So, uh, uh, that's well, that's so what it boils down to is if you're not getting a kickback from big pharma, um, you're not going to go that route. Or something like that. Yes. So uh, I'm seeing, looking at Jamie to see if she's ready there. Uh, are you ready? She, not if you are. Okay, she's good. All right. Uh, so let's talk about events. And I, we were just before you came on. I was mentioning that I was at Canacon on Friday, and then two of the folks that I met there are on the show today. But that was a great event, and the after parties were killer. I went to a couple different ones. I went to one before I came to yours, and so I probably had too good of a time at the first one, but. Uh, but it was it was an interesting, a very long day, but very fun day. So there is no such thing as too good of a time. I don't know. I had a pretty good time. So like I had a great time. I know Dan had a great time. I smoked some weed with him on the on the streets of Detroit. So it was it was you know. And shout out to Trust Lounge for allowing us to host that event. You know, it was great having it there. It was our second year to have it at Trust and um, they have been a pleasure to work with. And thanks to everyone that came. CanonCon was a huge hit. You know, I, I was able to see a lot of people that I haven't seen in a in a few weeks and, you know, and, and make some new connections too. So, um, and thanks for CanonCon for continuing to bring their event to Michigan and gives us an opportunity to come together. Now that I have that behind me, um, we're focused on our annual Lake Michigan Canna Cantina Beach Party. That is August 18th. If you want information on that, just email me, jamie.cooper at cincymag.com. It is a private party because it's open to our advertiser network. And then we fill in the holes with some lucky people that might be able to attend that event as well. But Like me. <laughs> right. But, you know, advertising with us really gets you guaranteed access and it's focused on the wholesale side of things and and the B2P B side of things and, you know, allowing people to make partnerships and the connections they need to help their their businesses grow, um, especially right now, you know, with uh, the price dropping the way it has, I think collaborations are going to be really, really, really important. Yep. And then yep. um, also working on the Smokers Bowl that's going to be hosted in Lansing. Um, um, and that's on August the 13th. It's hosted by CEP Presents. They did a, an event on April 23rd, and that was a huge, huge success. So I expect this one to be um, pretty big as well. They are bringing in Devin the Dude and Juicy J as their headline performers. And um, since he will be there and, and sponsoring the 360 camera, so make sure if you go get your picture taken. Mm. And then... Mm -hmm. um, so the Cannon Cantina is the 18th, and then the day after Cannon Cantina is our annual golf scramble that's open to anyone. You can buy a team of four, um, or you could just register as an individual, and we might throw you in with a cool couple of people. And then uh, working on our next Cincy night on September 15th, that's a license for consumption and sales, a lot like our Mardi Gras party. It's going to be hosted at Causeway Bay Hotel. Um, a lot of our advertisers will have tables at the event, so we expect about 100 or more brands to be present um, with their tables. And um, we'll be announcing more details around that event coming very shortly. Also already have MJ BizCon on the mind. I have a lot of people already talking about that this year. It's going to be in November. If you've never attended MJ BizCon, I suggest that you look into it. It's prob it's the world's largest cannabis business expo. And um, 
you know, I spent years not even buying tickets to it and just going and hanging outside the venue, but that's, that's a little secret. Uh, and then I also want to put one more event on your radar, and that is the Michigan Cannabis Industry Association Summer Annual. It's a group that I highly encourage you look into. They are a great trade association for our industry here in Michigan. They do incredible work for small and medium businesses and, and they have their summer annual up at Shanty Creek on August 10th through the 12th. So look into that, get a hold of Ida if you're looking uh, interested in becoming an MICIA member. That's all I have. Hopefully and Dan we is are and we're go and I'm going Dan can't make it Dan does his annual Canadian rough it uh, camping trip at the same time too bad for him but I'll be oh, there I Dan. know I said if you want to meet the industry, you know they'll be there right so <laughs> but I'll be there I got a suite I waited till the last minute to get a hotel room and all the hotel rooms are gone so I had to get a suite but okay I could live with that all hey right. I think I booked I think I booked at Airbnb the week of the event last year I had to drive but it was still awesome. It was worth it. Yep. Yep. Okay. Mr. Sparrow, what do we got today? Well, first off, I'd like to say that uh, we'll be hosting the pop-up party at the MICIA annual on Thursday evening again. And it is Hawaiian themed this year. So Ooh. just a heads up for everybody if they want to be festive. I'm um, going to bring my cockatoo shirt. That sounds great. Hey, what about the cockatoo? Is she coming too or not? No, no, oh. she's staying home. All right. Mm -mm. We want to have fun. Oh, uh, yeah, that's right. Can't have your kids there, right? So can't have your kids there. <laughs> All right. So I'm sorry, Dan. Go ahead. We were there. <laughs> no worries. Everybody loves Coco. Um, so this is the long awaited root weaver. Um so they were uh, the only sponsor that wasn't vending at Cannabash as a as a as a as a peer sponsor of uh, the Muskegon Township, the the seven dispensaries, and then Root Weavers, the only cultivator. And I'm going to show you this bag again because they're super proud of it and they did a really nice job on it. Um, down here in the bellow, they got their little Root Weavers logos inside there, so it's just uh -huh. detail. Um, the root weaver in the back is a see-through window. You can see my fingers in there. Mm -hmm. um, so you can actually see the flower. So just some thought that went into these bags. Um, here's actually what I got from them. Let me see. Can I flip it this way? There we go. Um, this is Pirate Kate. Came in at 25 and a half. Um, and these are 3.5s. So it's a total of 1.5 in this little tube. Um, they call them dog walkers. I've heard them called several times. Just nice little, nice little guys to go with. Um, I did talk to Blake Weaver. He's the CEO owner. And he did uh, let me know yesterday that he actually cleans the toilets there too. Um, <laughs> just, a, just a real modest, humble guy. It's a small team there. And they realized that the only way to be able to compete is to get these pounds out as cheap as possible. Um, the other thing that happened that a lot of people don't know is he had a gravity bong, and I don't know the name of it, but anybody in the cannabis space knows these things. It's a very nice glass bong. Um, it just rotates, and then obviously you rotate it again. But that is what he gave me at Cannabash, and it really put me in a position for about three hours. Um, it was a magnificent bong. Um, I wouldn't recommend it for the faint of heart. And that was Runts. Um, so that was Pirate Cake, Runts. They got Devil Driver that they're really pushing that's really got high, high terpenes, like 5% like terpenes. Mm. Um, Detroit Runts, Ice Cream Runts, Don Mega, Cookie Supreme, Rainbow Gelato. Um, Root Weaver is a Med and Rec facility. They have 1500 um, Med for, you know, Class C and a Class C Rec for the 2000. They're roughly in 11,000 square feet right now. They have exactly the same exact building across the parking lot, another 11,000. So they're hoping to do some uh, solventless processing. Um, they're getting some uh, flack from obviously the municipalities because everybody knows how processing goes in these municipalities whether you're using, you know, um, the butanes and the ethanols, you know, the, 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 the gases under pressure 
or whether you're just doing solvent lists, they still require you to be um, explosion proof. So they're just going through those things right now. Um, Root Weaver is also in Missouri. Um, in doing some research on them, I seen as well that they did have some other licensure here in Michigan, but some things went haywire. Um, and so Muskegon Township isn't their first crack at Michigan, but they really wanted and they and they persisted and they were able to open in uh, Muskegon Township here. And I believe they have all the licenses in township as well. So there won't be any other cultivators coming to a Canabash anytime soon. But they were awesome at Canabash. They, they cleared a huge field. They built a land bridge for us, for um, the patrons to be able to get uh, over uh, Crick. And uh, they weren't allowed to sell anything. So they were still at that sponsor level, knowing that they wouldn't be able to recoup any of their costs. So just really great guys. Um, I know it's carried in, in cloud cannabis. Um, I know it's in high profile and timber. Um, some Detroit companies, I think it's in, uh, King of Buds, maybe House of Dank, um, but just be on the lookout for it. It's very high terpene flower, tastes amazing. Um, they're not THC chasers, so you won't see a whole bunch of 35% coming out of their facility, but we all know that that is meaningless at this point anyway. So um, definitely recommend Root Weaver. I'm actually going to go out and try to grab some more here in town. Um, their business model is so successful that they didn't even have any flour in-house other than these three little pre-rolls that I was able to procure yesterday. So um, obviously they don't have any retail, so I couldn't buy any either. So I'll just have to swing out and check them out. I haven't really uh, <clears throat> smoked a lot of Root Weaver other than what I did at Canabash and what my brother-in-law had brought over as some trade samples when he was a dispo manager. So um, great company. Great, great guys, and I recommend everybody go out and try some. All That's righty, all sounds good. So, did they, did they offer? Well, of course, they can't since they don't do retail, they can't offer any kind of discounts or anything, right? No, there won't be no discounts this week as well. Um, you know, it's hard finding these shops that are willing to throw these discounts out. Most of them already have a lot of first time discounts and repeat discounts. I mean. The, the, the discounts that I'm throwing out there are pri primarily what they're going to offer anyways, to be frankly honest with you. Um, mm. So I just try to give everybody a heads up and some awareness. Weed Maps is your best friend when you're looking. Okay, dope. Thanks, Dan. All right, now we're going to bring in our first guest, Mark Honeycutt. I met him last Friday. Uh, actually, towards the, I was just getting ready to leave. And I I, I was making a really bad joke because his, his uh his company is called AB Lighting, and I was thinking of uh, Abby Normal from the Young Frankenstein movie. So I made that really bad joke. He actually laughed at it. So, you know, uh, but it, that, that was good. So, uh, Mark, uh, I, I was uh, I don't usually get to meet a CEO at these events. Usually it's a sales rep or a marketing person or something. So that impressed me right away that you were there standing behind your product. So why did you decide to come to Detroit? Sure, absolutely. Well, AB Lighting is a uh is a startup um, company. We're um, a subsidiary of another company called Enlight Technology. So I, you know, in my career, I've, I've helped other startups, you know, you know, get started and be very successful. And this is a newer project of mine. Started about a year ago. Uh, I actually know the owners of Enlight Technology. We used to work together years ago and they're in China. And um, they started this live scroll light business uh, about 10 years ago. And historically have been a, you know, have been an OEM manufacturer, but really had had goals and dreams of, of entering the U.S. market, North American market with their own brands, but didn't really know how to do it. So that's sort of how it all started. And uh, I agreed to help these folks out and uh, bring them to market with an American brand and and really try and get a, a large share of the American business. And I know you're based in Charlotte, North Carolina. I Correct. don't know if that's where you're at right now. Is that where you are? I'm in Charlotte, uh, North Carolina, with a uh, Hong Kong backdrop. I have an office. Yeah, there. I was looking at that thing. They don't look like Charlotte, you know. So yeah. uh, I was in Hong Kong about 25 years ago before the PRC took over when the Brits still were in charge. So uh, sure. great city. Spent about four days there. Uh, yeah. 
with another company. Uh, but anyway, so let's talk a little bit about your lighting brand. I know we've uh, I, I mentioned to you that I've seen lots of different wrinkles on this, where some of them use smartphones and some of them use this, that, and the other. What what what's your secret sauce? Well, I mean, I think with ten years of experience, both in cannabis and non-cannabis environments, and um, with the amount of R and D we've done, I, you know, I believe we've we've really dialed in the the right products at the right spectrums for the various crops, especially in this case, cannabis. Uh, and as I mentioned earlier, we're an OEM manufacturer, so we have not just our own intelligence and and you know research, but also that of our OEM customers, which are actually quite large as well. So. We've got a real culmination of, of, of talent and experience that really has helped us to build our lights, you know, to perfectly fit the marketplace. I mean, in today's market, you know, you've got to be, you've got to make a great quality product at a low cost. So, you know, you know our goal is to help our growers, you know, have really good yields with great quality product. And that's, uh, and that's what's helping us. So, um I think, you know, to short answer your question is we've got the skill set, the talent, the background, expertise to to make lights that are really unmatched in the industry. And then what states are you in? Obviously, you're I'm not. Are you already in Michigan? Or are you trying oh, to we, get into we have Michigan? several customers in Michigan? We met a bunch of customers a year ago at the Canacon show that are that became customers and have since then purchased our lights and have had, you know, have been grown with our product. And in fact, we, it was kind of old home days at our booth. On, on Friday and Saturday, we had a lot of existing customers come in talking about their crop and their grow, sending us pictures and so forth. But um, we have a lot of customers in Michigan. Of course, we have a lot on the West Coast and state of Washington, a lot in California. We have some customers in uh, New Mexico. We have several customers in Oklahoma. Um, you know, we really, we're not, you know, we're not, we'll take customers anywhere. We have inventory in the U.S. So, you know, we'll, we'll talk to growers um, wherever they are. New England is starting to pop up for us. Um, but we have, a, we have a lot of customers and a lot of returning customers as they, as they expand. So Yeah, that's important. If uh, they return, you know they like what they got. So does anybody have any questions for Mark? Feel free to jump in. Mark, you're, you're in the lighting game. Are you talking about high-pressure sodium? Uh, 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 are you talking about LEDs? What, what's your specialty? No, that's a good point. No, and, and I have, and I suppose where my background is, I came out of the industrial lighting, um, you know, business. So I, I entered the grow light business as a, as a lighting manufacturer, basically. So I didn't have the grow light component. So I, that's the part that I sort of had to, had to adopt to, uh, but we're only led. So we're, uh, it's all solid state lighting. Um, you know, we, and we use all tier one components, our drivers, our, our led diodes and our capacitors, everything we use in our, in our, light fixtures is all tier one because we want to have the highest quality of light and have the best longevity in the in the light. Is that an adjustable spectrum LED? We don't offer an adjustable spectrum. We have one light that's an adjustable spectrum. That's our light for the greenhouse. We have a, a top light 840 that has adjustable spectrum. Um, and um, but for the other lights we have different lights. We have we have veg lights and then we have other lights for the for the flowering process. Um, but, um, and again, we have, we also have third party test reports that, that really break down not just our, our own spec sheet, but also break down the light in great detail. So it's a 10 page report that's produced by third party labs. So when we, when customers get serious about our, our products, we want them to have this 10 page analytical report that really shows them exactly what they're buying. Um, that way there's no, you know, they're not taking our word for it, but they're taking the word of a third party test lab. This is exactly what the light does and it's in its capabilities. So I have a ton of questions, but we'll just do one, a couple quick ones. Sure. Um, do you offer any financing help? We can, we have partners in financing. Uh, and we also offer some, depending on the customer, we can do stuff, some stuff internally. Um, so we do offer some you know, there are a couple of different options in terms of the size of the project, um, you know, with financing, but we have options available. Yes. So I know five years ago, I was chastised for even suggesting LED just for the, you know, mitigation on, on HVAC and everything. And everybody's learned that you need much more dehumidification when you do LEDs and there's other things involved. Um, do you offer the reds and the blue spectrums in these lights then? 
We do. I mean, we, we feel like we have the ideal spectrum for cannabis and our, our test data shows that. Um, but we do a lot of, we do a lot of vegetable, uh, work as well. So we can offer more red if the customer wants more red or more far red, we can offer that again, we're the factory. Uh, most of our competitors in this space actually don't make their own product. You know, they're sourcing product. We are our own factory. So we've got all the capabilities to modify the spectrum of that's that what the Gora wants. Um, but we can talk about the spectrum in great detail and do some smaller cycles and see if it produ produces the right yield that the grower is looking for. Um, but yes, we, we feel like we've got the right, you know, our full spectrum lights for cannabis, we think are, are dialed in really appropriately. Yeah, I helped design a water jacketed LED light that is in operation in a couple of facilities here in mm -hmm. Michigan right now. Um, and, and, you know, in, in our quest to recreate the sun, um, without the radiation, we'll just never get there. I mean, the sun is obviously the best light in the world. Yeah, I, I mean, I would say, you know, you know, we don't we don't have to use a, an active coolant. I mean, we have a, a patented heat sink in our lights. Um, that's one of our key features, our selling features, is that we have a patented heat sink that allows our lights to run cooler, even though you're using a thousand watt, you know, fixture. You know, you're able to run much cooler than our competitors, which which decreases the amount of AC you have to pump into the grow rooms. Um, our lights, 50 pounds. Our big our big flower light is. When our when our our customers compare that with our competitors' lights that are around 30 or 40 pounds, it's all in the heat sink. And the benefit of having that really hot powered heat sink, even it's not it's not active cooling, it's passive cooling, is it allows you to run much cooler which makes the light run longer and you save so much money on AC with our lights. So. Thank you. I, I just, I just know a lot about these lighting things. And, and I think I've even had a conversation with you um, in the past. You look super possible. familiar. I do a bunch of shows. I, I do at least a dozen shows a year. The other thing too, I'll say is that, and what you said earlier about how, you know, five years ago about led, I really think to be completely candid, the LED has really, I would say, becomes, you know, has become a, 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 a very viable path significantly just in the last couple of years. If you look at, at the effectiveness of the product and the price points, really in only the last couple of years has LED been what I believe to be, you know, a must have. Um, prior to that, the, the LED wasn't quite as good. It was a lot more expensive. But now I think we're there where it, it's pretty hard to justify going to an HPS or a non-LED solution with, with the pricing that's available today and the, the how good the products are, and also the rebates that are available. You can get a substantial amount of the money, you know, rebated back in most states. So, you know, if you take, you know, that 20, 30% back, in some cases, even more, that, that also makes the decision, you know, to go LED much more attractive. I just know upon the onset of cannabis in Michigan, you know, the renegades and the, and the, and the trendsetters, you know, they didn't want to change a whole lot to their system yep. going from, you know, caregiving to, you know, the licensed economy. So a yep. lot of people just went with the cocoa and the, and the Gavitas because it'd been working so well for so long, but yep. there is a learning curve to the LED, but yep. most of the good growers will tell you they can grow underneath any light. Yeah, I think, you know, you definitely have to manage your, your environment closer if you're going to use LED. I mean, the temperature, the humidity, and, and also, don't, you can't forget CO2. If you're, going to grow, if you're going to grow with these high-powered LED lights, you've got to use the CO2 to go with it. Without the CO2, you're just wasting all that light. Um, and your good growers know that. But if you, if you manage all of those elements the right way, the, the, the right, and you have to water properly, irrigation is critical. But if you do all of those things the right way, and our lights can make a huge difference in your yield. And that's what our growers tell us. Hey, uh, Jamie, before we move on, you got any questions for him? Yeah, I do have a question. So obviously Michigan is a pretty established market at this point, you know, a, a large majority of the cultivators that are, are operational, but, you know, efficiency is, is incredibly important. And we know that LEDs provide a bit of that. And so what, can like what do you do like what kind of advice do you offer some of these cultivators that might be struggling and they just 
possibly might need just to make that move and and find better lighting and 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 just kind of increase efficiency in their their production right well i would say that you got to look at everything you got you don't don't want to just keep spending money you know good money after bad money but you've got to look at it, your whole operation lighting is just one component i mean it's 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 one very important component but it's only one component lighting isn't going to make or break on its own you know whether or not a grower is successful or not um yeah i love to go see my customers and i get invited to go see them and i do i go i get out to see most of them eventually um and i'm i'm i have dialogue with them about everything because i'm in a lot of other facilities so i can offer some very useful feedback as i you know walk their facility with them i can ask questions and give them good feedback um but usually um usually the the usually the the growers that are successful are pretty open-minded too i mean they are they want to hear what you've got to say and what you've seen in other places but you got to watch you got to watch your dollars everywhere i mean i'll tell you labor cost is a big one i'll say if there's one thing i see a lot of is a lot of wasted labor i mean you don't need you know, a lot of you know you should man you should really focus on how many full-time employees you need versus the part-time labor for trimming and things like that and harvest you know, a lot of these growers I see will get a little bit, they, they, they get too much on the full-time employee side and they don't get full utilization of that labor because they don't need it all the time. I think really make sure that you've got the right number of full-time employees and then just hire your, 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 you have good partners for your trimming and harvest as needed. That's probably the number one thing I see in terms of waste of money. Um, but you've got to manage the environment. If you're going to have the highest yield, you've got to make sure you're managing that environment properly. You know, to have the right nutrition, have the right irrigation, have the right, you know, the humidity, the temperature, the right CO2, all those things. Um, and then you'll get the best yield you possibly can. It sounds like you got it all figured out. When you're ready to throw your hat in the ring, I know a good consulting company that can help you with licensure. No, I, again, and I, and we- Nice I, plug, I, by the way, so. Uh, yeah, I, I'm happy to, I'm open to that. So well, and, and Dan has actually said consulting company there. So, but it's uh, his company. Yeah. Yes. Right, um, so. I, I would say someone said earlier about the importance of partnerships in this industry. I, I can't echo that enough. Um, I, I think that in this cannabis industry, we've got to all be, you know, team players and help each other out. And that's critical. And I even, I even talked to my competitors. I mean, obviously we're not going to share any confidential information, but I think it's important in this industry to work collectively with, you know, with growers and consultants and, and, you know, various engineers and investors and, and in some cases competitors, because, you know, it's important for the, for the industry to survive and be successful for all of us. So um, I'm a big believer in collaboration and um, I, and I, I talked to everyone and Mike, I'm glad you stopped in the booth and we had a very healthy conversation and, and glad to be here today. Um, cause I think that's, that's part of our success collectively is working together. Yeah. We're still on that kumbaya stage in Michigan, but I think by, you know, the next year or so, as things begin to consolidate may not be as quite as friendly as it has been, but I mean, it's, it's in general, it's a very supportive community. Everybody works together. I think the team will agree with that. So, all right. Can you stick with us for the rest of the show? Cause then we have the shameless plugs at the end and all Absolutely. that. Absolutely. Right? Okay, great. We're going to bring in Jeff Hayward calling in all the way from Canada. You can unmute. There, there he is. Okay. And I was walking the show and I had my press credentials on and Jeff actually tackled me in the aisle and said, come over to our booth. Well, it wasn't quite like that, but, but he jumped out at me and said, I want to talk to you. So, and I, I said, sure, why not? So a horticultural specialist. Now you just heard all the lighting stuff. Let's talk about what you guys do. Uh, yeah, and thanks for uh, noticing my assertiveness at the show. I find that's pretty effective when you're in a new market. You know, people don't always come and introduce themselves. So I like to take the initiative. No, I like that. Um, yeah, people so, are running the other direction when I come, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, we're always happy to meet members of the media. So glad to be here. Um, yeah, so uh, we're a newish company. We've, uh, we're called Mid Horticulture Limited, based out of Burnaby, BC, here in Canada. Um, we're focused on biostimulant products, um, fertilizer supplements. We don't do a uh, full nutrient line. We're not trying to pull growers over to change everything that they're doing. Our focus is to 
create products that any grower can use in any system or setup to either increase their yield, increase their quality, uh, increase the results in some way. So uh, what we were talking about in Michigan at the show and kind of our focus right now in the U.S. is uh, microbial mass product right here. This is a beneficial bacteria product made up of five strains of bacillus bacteria, um, a very unique biological product. Uh, we feel that we've really solved a lot of the challenges that um, have kind of held back some of the other uh, bacterial and fungal products in the past. Uh, we've got something very effective, very versatile um, that offers really observable benefits at uh, every stage of the crop cycle. Um, so yeah, really happy to get it down to the U.S. market and, and meet some new growers. Yeah, absolutely. That's one of the reasons I wanted to get him on the show because he wants to get into Michigan. And uh, obviously, uh, we have a lot of folks on this show that can probably help you accomplish that mission. But I'm sure that my team has some questions. So anybody want to leap in and talk to Jeff? We have five strains of Bacillus. Uh each one must perform a unique function or else you wouldn't include it in the mix. What are you, what are you accomplishing with these particular creatures? Yeah, so it's a bacterial consortium. So really the, uh, the sum is greater than, than each of the parts. Um, each individual bacteria uh, performs certain uh, roles, but uh, there's a lot of overlap. Um, and, you know, we've got a few that like a higher oxygen environment, so they'll settle out kind of at the top of the soil horizon others that kind of like a lower oxygen. And then we've got one that's sort of a facultative anaerobe that can live really deep uh, in the bed or in a pot. Um, but essentially what the product does is it solubilizes phosphorus, calcium, and iron to increase the uptake of those key nutrients. Um, they also produce extracellular enzymes. So there's uh, eight different enzymes that are produced to help break down other fertilization compounds and organic matter uh, to feed the soil microbiome, to feed the plant and keep everything healthy. Um, so really the benefits that you're going to see with this product is, uh, you can use it when you're making clones, um, and you're going to get faster root initiation and people generally notice like a much larger explosion of roots, much faster and a higher percentage of viable clones that are worth carrying forward to the veg stage, fewer calls. Um, and then you only need to apply it once every two weeks. So it's just an inoculant. You don't need to be using it every time you feed or every time you water once every two weeks is enough to maintain a good viable population. And you're going to get much faster vegetative growth. Um, so a lot of growers have been able to actually reduce the length of their veg cycle. So they're able to flip a little bit faster and reach that size and structure that they need to get into bloom. Um, and then you're going to get just an overall biomass increase. So bigger roots, uh, bigger plant with bigger stalks, bigger branches, bigger leaves, and of course, bigger yields at harvest. Now, the... Uh... Brood teas and living soil are all the rage here in Michigan. This is what uh, what cultivators are looking at doing right now. Your product's compatible with those? Yeah, it works really well in an organic system. That was really um, the idea behind the conception of the product was what if we could make the best compost tea in the world that you don't have to go to the trouble of brewing. Um, and we were really looking at sort of the organic living soil side of the industry. So it works great in those in those sorts of setups. We don't encourage i mean some some people will take the product and they'll mix it into an aerated, aerated compost tea brew um and do it that way um that can work we don't really encourage it because we have a few strains in the mix that grow about five times faster on a sugar diet than the others so you end up with a product coming out at the other end that isn't going to have all of the same features isn't going to perform quite as well um, so typically with organic growers what we'll suggest is doing your compost teas one week and then microbial mass as directed on the bottle the next week and sort of alternating back and forth. And that's a great balance because obviously with a, with a living soil, it's all about microbial diversity and overall microbial biomass. You wanna make sure that you've got those thousands of, of different microorganisms working together to, to provide services to the plant. What we're offering is more like your frontline goal scorers on the hockey team, uh, very, very beneficial consortium that you can sort of add into that to, to really maximize the benefit. So does this product work in all forms of medium? Yeah, it works in every growing media and also very, uh, very effective in synthetic systems. So anyone running salt-based nutrients, um, you're going to see similar results. Um, actually, I would say probably where we see the most dramatic increases are um, deep water culture and uh, rock wool systems 
sort of systems that have no microbial life whatsoever and you get this in and you really see a night and day difference. Um, it's also compatible with uh, commercial fertigation systems. So one of the interesting things about the bacillus genus of bacteria is that it's the only bacterial genus that forms a true spore. Um, so our production process involves growing each strain of bacteria separately and then and then forcing it to go into that spore state. Um, so in the bottle, they're not active, they're not eating or breathing or producing waste products, and we don't need to incorporate sugars or any kind of food substances into the bottle to keep them alive. What that means is that when you run it through your miles of water line and thousands of drip emitters, we're not adding a bunch of food resources that are going to contribute to biofilm buildup. You're not going to get a lot of clogged emitters or, or a mess. Um, so it's really well suited to a commercial facility that needs to obviously keep everything running clean um, while still getting a lot of those benefits. And then obviously the little the little little container that you had held up would be great for my little home grow. Do you sell this in 330 gallon totes or 55 gallon drums or? Yeah, um, you're not gonna need anything that large. We go all the way up to a 20 liter or a five gallon jug. Um, so like I said, it's only used once every two weeks. And this is the, the pro version that I'm holding here, which is uh, highly concentrated. So depending on where you are in your crop cycle, you're only gonna need one to two milliliters per gallon of, of water and only once every two weeks. So you really don't need huge quantities. Um, and we've got very large producers in Canada that you know will buy one or two 20 liter bottles at a time and that suits them well. And then on the other side, because we really do believe in access and we know that um, there are a lot of growers who maybe aren't operating at a huge facility scale. Maybe it's a grow tent at home and they're very serious and passionate about it and they want to produce the best product that they can. So we do have microbial mass, uh, sort of the regular version, and it's the same bacteria, all the same benefits, just much less concentrated. So it's much more practical if you're, say, watering five gallons at a time or less. So we've, we've sort of got the, the entire industry covered, something for everyone. So how would a home grower, i.e. myself, get their hands on any of this stuff? Uh, well, we are available in about 30 grow stores in Michigan at the moment. Um, if you visit our website, mimhort.com, that's M-I-I-M-H-O-R-T.com, we've got a store locator on there where you can enter your zip code and it'll show you the five closest stores that have product on the shelf. Um, and otherwise, you know, if, if your local store doesn't carry it, ask about it and uh, we'd be happy to have a chat with them. Jamie, do you have questions? Yeah, I was just curious, like what percentage of your business is uh, regulated or home growers? Um, I don't know offhand. I'd say it's something like 50-50. Like um, in Canada, we have a very similar system that you guys have in Michigan where we've got the government regulated licensed producers and then we also have the a acmpr and mmar which are basically our caregiver licenses um so yeah right from the beginning you know we launched this product in 2020 so we were well into legalization in canada and we really understood sort of the qa requirements of commercial facilities so we're we've got coas for every batch that's produced and we're very proactive as far as uh, what government regulated growers require um but we come from the legacy industry, you know, uh, my partners and I have been involved in this business for, you know, 15, 15 years in my case, Frank's been in it for 20 years. Um, so we definitely appreciate the, the legacy part of the industry. We have a lot of respect for the grow stores and the work that they've done to build the industry. Um, so, yeah, I, I think probably we've got something like a 50, 50 market share at the moment between the two kind of overlapping industries. And so how, how long has the company been around? Uh, we got going in uh, 2019 and uh, launched Microbial Mass in January 2020 at the Vancouver Lift Show and uh, had a great first year. Um, Canada was very receptive. We, uh, we did very, very well at the beginning. We're, we're really pleased with how we were welcomed. Um, and, you know, we're hoping for a repeat as we launch into the U.S. now. So do you sell in, oh, I'm sorry, Jim, do you sell into all the provinces? I mean, do you have a pretty national market in Canada? Yeah, uh, we're available coast to coast. Um, yeah, we've got hundreds of grow stores with product on the shelf and several hundred commercial facilities running the product as well. Um, and we're also, uh, yeah, we've got 
a footprint in California and Oklahoma and Washington, Oregon, uh, Missouri, where uh, yeah, every day we've got kind of new new stores coming online and new growers calling to ask for the product. So, all right, sorry, yeah. sorry, I cut you off there, Jamie. Go ahead. Yeah, I was just wondering uh, if you guys were starting to branch into other companies as well, or kind of preparing for to go that global route. Yeah, um, we're definitely pursuing registration in other markets around the world. Um, you know, we're not looking to limit ourselves, so we'll see what the future holds. But right now, um, in order to do it properly and to provide the proper support for the product and for the growers, um, it's important to kind of move slowly. We've got four reps in the United States now kind of handling that territory, making sure that people understand how to be successful with our product. Um, and we've also got a number of other products kind of in the R&D stage. So we'll be um, bringing new offerings to the market in the future. And yep. then the, 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 the million dollar question, how many repeat customers do you have? Uh, you know, it's the thing about this product is when you try it for the first time, often people can see the difference within 24 hours. And by the end of the crop, they're pretty blown away. Um, so our approach has always been to provide free samples to any grower who's serious about uh, their crop and wants to give it a try. And we like to let the product speak for itself. Um, honestly, it's all repeat customers. It's uh, one of those products where once you see what it does and how it works, um, you know, people tend to be customers for life. So we've got good loyalty with our with our growers. Jeff, you mentioned that you ship the, the product in a spore stage. What triggers the bacillus from going from spore stage to active stage? Uh, so they're rhizosphere bacteria, so they really need to be in the rhizosphere, which is not the whole root zone, but just the one to two millimeters around the roots and the root hairs. When they get into there with a neutral pH and with root exudates coming from the plant, they sense that they're kind of in the proper environment uh, and it's time to wake up and go to work. Um, we do recommend when you mix into your reservoir to use it within 24 hours, because if, especially if you've got sugars or another food source in there, you might fool the bacteria into waking up. Um, and then, you know, there's the potential for them to starve to death before they're able to get into your plant and get to work. Um, but typically that doesn't happen, especially if you're, if you're using salt nutrients, that's a fairly uncomfortable environment in the, in the reservoir. So you're going to maintain that spore form typically. Um, until until they hit the root zone. Uh, Mark, a lighting guy, do you have any questions? I'm sure you must be intrigued by this too. Go ahead if you do. No, I mean, just a comment. I think nutrients are critical. It's one of the major components. You got to feed your plants the properly to get the right success rate for sure. And it sounds like it, it's from Jeff's conversation. Once the, the growers try his product, they're, they're pretty sticky. <laughs> they come back for more. So that's good stuff. All right. Any other questions for either Mark or uh, Jeff? No? A quiet group today. All right. Well, let's uh, go ahead and begin our shameless plugs uh, for uh, Jeff and Mark. That's where this is the part where you provide the information, uh, how people can find you on the Internet or call you or email you or phone you or whatever you want to do. And uh, let's start with Mark first. How do folks reach out to AB Lighting? What's the best way to reach you? Yeah, I mean, you can certainly go to ablighting.com and there's a place to leave a contact there. And some one of our sales team will call you back. Um, you're welcome to email me directly if you like. It's mark.honeycutt at ablighting.com. And um, so either one of those works. If you go to ablighting.com online, then you can see a lot about our products and so forth. But either one of those works fine. Okay, Jeff, you're up. Yeah, you can find us online at mimhort.com. We're also on Instagram at mimhort. Uh, we've got a Facebook page as well. Um, you can always send us a, uh, an email, info at mimhort.com. Um, and if you're interested in getting a free sample of microbial mass, um, go to the online store at mimhort.com, use the coupon code ENHANCE, and get yourself a free, free bottle to try it at home. There you go, Dan. A good segue for you. So you can get yourself a freebie and see how it works for you. All right, but well, go ahead. So uh, let's talk about Hatchet Plan Michigan, your consulting company. Actually, Mark just raised his finger up real quick. Oh, yeah. I mean, okay. 
it Go also, ahead. sorry, I didn't mention also on Instagram and Facebook, AB Grow Lights is our handle for both. So um, you can certainly see us there and see a lot of a lot of case studies from our customers there too. So AB Grow Lights in both of those places. Okay. Damn. Okay. So I just want to thank all of our wonderful sponsors again. Um, without them, the show wouldn't be possible. To our wonderful guest, if anybody's looking for some microbials or some new state-of-the-art lighting, get a hold of one of these gentlemen. Um, as always, I can be found at dan at hatchaplanmi.com. And uh, be looking for Cannabash Fest 2023 information coming soon. So you've fully recovered from 2022, have you? I know I've done events and they're very taxing, so. Well, we're taking this weekend off for Connie's uh, birthday and we're doing oh, yeah. some tubing and hanging out. So we're going to be hitting it hard. Um, MICIA, Jamie Cooper's got some Sensi stuff coming up that we got to do and looking to hibernate for the winter here in Michigan. Yeah, August is jam-packed full of stuff, right, Jamie? Oh my gosh. Yeah, it is like in September starting to look that way as well. Just a lot going on. It's funny here in Michigan, we cram everything into these warm summer months and then it gets a little quiet and then we hibernate, get that extra fat on us, all that fun stuff. Um, so, but yeah, like our, our next, we're just planning our Canna Cantina party for August 18th, the Golf Scramble 19th. And then um, I'm excited about the MICIA Summer Annual. I can't believe it's just a couple of weeks away. Dan and Connie are going to be hosting an event. And it's so funny because leading up to Canna Bash, I had talked to Connie before the event and I had told her, I was like, it feels like chaos leading up to the event. But as soon as it's over, that's when it's like, I'm going to do it again. You know, like it, it feels kind of crazy, but it's just so rewarding and it's so much fun after the fact. And that that's really what keeps us going and planning the next event. So I'm sure it's a matter of time before they start putting everything in the works for 2023. And yeah, so, oh, and then our next virtual speed networking, and we did host one today at noon. You you know, we had about 40 people that had registered for that one. And then we have um, our next one's going to be August 10th. If you go to connects.cincymag.com, sign up for a free platform. You'll stay up to date on all of our events. Okay. Uh, Mr. Rick, what's happening with Michigan Normal these days? Well, of course, the National Office of Normal is just going crazy with all this potential federal legalization. And we're doing our very best to support all the different efforts that they're putting forth there as well, too. Uh, you can see uh, we'll be at a lot of different places this summer as well, too. Uh, you can always find me uh, at minorml.org. You can look uh, uh, all my different socials with Michigan Rick Thompson on, on uh, Instagram and, of course, my Facebook portal. So many different ways to get a hold of us. Yes. And Rick, yes. you, is there a bridge walk coming up, too? There is a bridge walk. At least I see there are people planning a bridge walk. So, and that's, of course, Labor Day weekend. <sighs> And which isn't all that far away anymore. Uh, I, uh, I mean, I, it, August is actually the quietest time of the year usually, but certainly not in the cannabis community. There is, you, you can't hardly go a day without finding something to do somewhere. And even in the winter, I know our friends from Float Nation have a lot of indoor events they're planning, including uh, using Causeway Bay and Lansing as that central point. So uh, don't don't despair. Just when September rolls around in October, there'll still be events going on, right, Jamie? Yeah, and Float has their Blues Brother, the Blues and Infused event that's going on August twentieth in Niles. So right. uh, I'm Dan. starting to see more and more. And then in Muskegon, there's that Canna Carnival that's happening in August, and yep. you know, it's just, yeah, I think it is. Yeah, right. Yep. Ton of events. Ton of events. Okay. Well, I'm Mike Brennan, and I produce the show only with the help of all these very talented and informed people. And I want to thank our guests for appearing today, Mark and Jeff. Thanks for joining us.